you gone back to these sources since Thursday? Are some of them considering speaking publicly? Well, let me just say it this way. I would fully, fully expect more reporting to come out about this and, and more confirmation uh, and new pieces of information in the coming days and weeks. Yeah. That is the editor-in-chief of The Atlantic and also the writer of that explosive piece about President Trump's comments about U.S. soldiers that have the White House playing damage control since the piece dropped last week. I want to start by recapping the reporting that came from that article. Now, the piece details what happened when President Trump visited France to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I. The president, as you may remember, canceled a trip to an American cemetery saying that it was raining and his helicopter wouldn't fly there and it would take too long to drive. But the weather certainly didn't stop other world leaders from attending that ceremony. The Atlantic says it discovered the real reason for Trump skipping the visit. And I now quote from the piece. Trump rejected the idea of the visit because he feared his hair would become disheveled in the rain because he did not believe it important to honor American war dead, according to four people with firsthand knowledge of the discussion that day. In a conversation with senior staff members on the morning of the scheduled visit, Trump said, why should I go to that cemetery? It's filled with losers. In a separate conversation on the same trip, Trump referred to the more than 1,800 Marines who lost their lives as suckers for getting killed there. Now, the article goes on to describe the president's visit to Arlington National Cemetery with his then Homeland Security Secretary, General John Kelly, to pay their respects to Kelly's son, who was killed in Afghanistan. And I quote, Trump, while standing by Robert Kelly's grave, turned directly to his father and said, I don't get it. What was in it for them? Kelly, people close to him said he thought Trump was making a ham-handed reference to the selflessness of the America's all-volunteered armed forces. But later, he came to realize that Trump simply does not understand non-transactional life choices. The Atlantic article also talks about the president discussing a military parade, and I quote, Trump asked his staff not to include wounded veterans on grounds that spectators would feel uncomfortable in the presence of amputees. Quote, nobody wants to see that, he said. In a minute, we will get into Donald Trump's history of disrespecting the military, but first, some reaction now to the revelations in the article itself. The president, he's been carping about this for days, this from yesterday's rambling Labor Day press conference. The story is a hoax written by a guy who's got a a tremendously bad history. The magazine itself, which I don't read, but I hear it's just totally anti-Trump. Who would say a thing like that? Only an animal would say a thing like that. There is nobody that has more respect for not only our military, but for people that gave their lives in the military. We'll get to more of that in a moment. But the president's cheerleaders at Fox News, they immediately that evening came to his defense when the story broke. Don't you find it the least bit questionable that the Biden campaign already had an ad made based on this uh, mm. this hoax? So this is obviously coordinated. Port Always anonymous sources. This happened supposedly two years ago. Now we're finding out about it 60 days before the election. And the, by the way, the Trump campaign got scores of people on the record who are also they, they're saying that's of course not at all what we heard or saw. When you don't have the facts, you resort to lies. The fastest labor market recovery from any economic crisis in history. Perfect time for a hoax. First of all, what Jeanine Pirro said was completely not true, but I digress. But here's where things got really confusing for Fox. After one of their own, in fact, one of the most respected journalists they have there confirmed a lot of The Atlantic's own reporting. National security correspondent Jennifer Griffin, she sent out a series of tweets late Friday that went against what Fox hosts were saying all day. Griffin said she confirmed that the president didn't want to drive to the cemetery to see the war dead in France and that multiple sources told her that Trump did say that Americans who served in Vietnam were suckers. Griffin also backing up a portion of the Atlantic piece about the planned military parade when the commander in chief reportedly didn't want wounded vets there because, quote, that's not a good look. Well, many former and current Fox News personalities and producers, they came to Griffin's defense, most notably anchors Brett Baer and Neil Cavuto. 
But Trump, he sent out a tweet saying that Griffin should be fired. Now let's go back to the Atlantic article itself. It also detailed the president's treatment of John McCain, including how he said he didn't want to go to, quote, that loser's funeral, and how Trump was furious that the White House flag was lowered to half-mast for the senator after he died. Trump even sent a tweet denying he even called McCain a loser. But he did, and we have it, as they say, on tape. Take a listen to then-candidate Trump. I supported him. He lost. He let us down. But, you know, he lost. So I never liked him as much after that, because I don't like losers. But, but Frank, Frank, let me get hero. to it. He's he hit me. Hero. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. That from Captain Courageous, who decided to duck the military service with phantom bone spurs. Again, that's just one of many times that Donald Trump has actually disrespected a decorated veteran, even though, as I said, he avoided his own Vietnam service. Trump, he still goes after Americans who are willing to sacrifice for their country, including George H.W. Bush, a Navy pilot during World War II. Trump repeatedly called Bush a loser, his words, for getting shot down by the Japanese. The president even stooped so low as to belittle Gold Star parents who lost their son, a soldier heroically who died for this country in Iraq. Their crime, it turned out, was speaking at a Democratic convention and having the audacity to criticize the president for his inflammatory comments about their Muslim religion. Here's the president responding. If you look at his wife, she was standing there. She had nothing to say. She probably, maybe she wasn't allowed to have anything to say. You tell me, but plenty of people have written that. Even though the president second guesses and blames the generals when things don't go well, he still said he'd make a good one, believe it or not. I said, let them fight. They're both our enemies. Let them fight. Sir, we want to do it. They go in and they end up fighting both of them. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I think I would have been a good general. Yeah, he may dream about being a general, but some of the ones who served under him are clearly not impressed by the guy who hired them. Former Defense Secretary James Mattis, he said, Trump, the first president in his lifetime who doesn't even try to unite the American people, he even quoted the Nazis when describing the president. General John Kelly, who also became at one point the former chief of staff to this president, reportedly called Donald Trump an idiot as well as unhinged. The president criticized both men, of course, after they left the administration, like he does with all of the quote-unquote best people he bragged about hiring in the first place. But Trump, he went after General Kelly in a particularly personal fashion on Friday night after the Atlantic piece became the lead story on every newscast in America. I know John Kelly. He was with me, didn't do a good job, had no temperament, and ultimately he was petered out. He got, he was exhausted. This man was totally exhausted. He wasn't even able to function in the last number of months. He was not able to function. He was sort of a tough guy. By the time he got eaten up in this world, it's a different world than he was used to, he was unable to function. And I told him, John, you're going to have to go. Please give me a letter of resignation. Donald Trump talking about someone's temperament and a decorated general not being tough enough. Now, despite that and what Trump reportedly said at the gravesite of the general's son, Kelly, he has not denounced the president publicly. But as they say, stay tuned. Joe Biden, though, is not shy about unloading on the president. Remember that Biden's late son, Bo, he wore a uniform for this country and he served in both Iraq as well as Kosovo. Take a listen to the man who's trying to become our next commander in chief. When it comes to veterans, he's downright un-American. I've never said that about a president ever, ever, ever. But calling those who have served, risked their lives, even gave their lives to our nation, losers and suckers. These are heroes. I should note that an official with the Trump campaign actually mocked Joe Biden when he was visiting a cemetery to pay his respects to his first wife, their daughter, and Biden's son, Bo, over Labor Day weekend. That staffer even posted a video of Biden in a graveyard waving to the press, complete with a snarky caption. Then yesterday, Trump even went after the Pentagon itself and the buildup of the military, even though 
He keeps bragging about spending records amount of money on troops and equipment. Listen to a person who, if you didn't know it, is actually our commander in chief now. I'm not saying the military is in love with me. The soldiers are. The top people in the Pentagon probably aren't because they want to do nothing but fight war so that all of those wonderful companies that make the bombs and make the planes and make everything else stay happy. Okay, so let's get our arms around this. The commander-in-chief is bashing the Pentagon. But don't forget, he's the person who has hired the people running the Pentagon, including this guy, Defense Secretary Mark Esper, who was, by the way, speaking of that uh, industrial center here, he was the top lobbyist for a defense contractor, Raytheon, before he was chosen to run the Pentagon. And also, by the way... The president is the one who decides when to send us to war and to approve military budgets. So the idea that things are happening in a vacuum without his knowledge is both telling and also a bunch of you-know-what. It also doesn't get a lot swampier than that little twist that we just saw. So we've just spelled out what the president has to say about people who wear your uniform to protect us. I want to wrap this up by how those people feel about him. And typically, it's a population that definitely skews Republicans. Certainly did four years ago when Trump first ran for president. Well, a new poll of active duty troops conducted by the Military Times show half of the soldiers have an unfavorable opinion of Donald Trump. Less than four in 10 approve of him. And if the election were held today, 41% say they'd vote for Biden, while 37% say they'd vote for Trump. I should note that four years ago, that same poll from the Military Times showed Trump with a 19-point lead over Hillary Clinton. Historically, as I said, the military has supported Republican presidents, but not when it comes to this president. Okay, when we come back, yet another book about Donald Trump is coming out. This one from Bob Woodward. He, of course, of Watergate fame. We're going to tell you what we know about his work. And also, we're going to run through the long list of people close to Trump, including family or certainly hired by the president, who've spoken out against him.